Uh, tonight on our program, we have Doug Brown. So Doug has been a community advocate, a, a champion on transit issues in, in the Burlington and across Ontario for that matter um, for, for many, many years. You know, when I think about transit in Burlington and Halton, I mean, there's one name that certainly comes to yes. mind about, you know, being an expert on the file and understanding all the intricacies that go on. So, you because know. Because it is very intricate. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to, to be a friend of Doug's for many, many years now. And, uh, and you know, I'm glad that he came on the program tonight to share share your expertise on on this particular file. And, you know, with that, Doug, you know, I, I guess my first question is: Is Burlington's transit system meeting the needs of our community right now? Uh, no, it meet it meet it does meet vital needs, but uh, it, people really are suffering from uh, a lack of service. Uh, so. Um, uh, for example, if you live up in the northeast of Burlington, uh, it's hourly service. And uh, I have friends up there, uh, some of their trips are over two hours. This is all yeah. within Burlington, so that, that's just not acceptable. Uh, because this system is underfunded, we don't have enough service hours, so we have things like major roads like Walkers and Appleby with hourly service. Uh, if we could get the frequency to something at, get it down to at least half an hour, uh, that would make a tremendous improvement uh, and it would uh, really enhance people's lives. You know, you, you can imagine how difficult it is if you, to get uh, to a, a, another part of town, not that far away even, uh, and it takes, it's going to take you over two hours, how, how that impacts on your life. And, and if you're, say, working and you've got to add that kind of commute, it's not like you're commuting all the way to Toronto or something, you know, some of the some of the local commutes are, are very, very long time wise. Absolutely, and uh, I, I, and I get that piece, but when I look at it, and I, you know, governments have, have different priorities, right? Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of pieces that they have to play with, and, you know, so, so where do we, where do we kind of fall in regards to other municipalities our size? Yeah, well, uh, there's quite a range, especially in Halton. Uh, across the GTA, and there's been some good com comparisons uh, done of that, um, we spend about one half of the GTA average on transit. If you, if you, if you take the per capita cost we're paying on our taxes uh, for transit, we're about one half the GTA average. So that means we're in the lower part, part of the spectrum for Toronto. Uh, and um, then Halton, uh, 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 we're not in stellar company. Uh, I must say, I've been impressed with what Oakville's done with transit. You know, over the the past five six years, they've made tremendous strides, great improvements in service, great improvements in ridership. They used to be about our level of ridership. They've gone uh, fifty percent ahead of us. Oh wow! Uh, so we're about two million. There are three million. So so it does make a difference. And and uh, uh, of course in Holton. Uh, we we are actually the second best system in Halton, which is, reflects badly, I think, on other areas of Halton because uh, Halton Hills doesn't have any regular bus service. If people yeah. want to be on a bus, it ha they have to walk to the nearest uh, GO station. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've heard some horror stories of people in Georgetown, in uh, Halton Hills, having to walk enormous distances. You know, they don't have a car mm -hmm. and they don't have the money for you can imagine if you say have got a 15 mile trip how costly that would be to say take a taxi and, and especially you know if you, you like chances are you you just wouldn't be able to afford it milton has transit but it's um, it's still very rudimentary uh, milton has a lot to do to get their uh, transit system uh, so that it serves people better and people can uh, start using transit not just to get to the go station to get to toronto but to get around town. Well, Doug, that, that, that brings up an issue because I, I uh, interviewed for Kojiko, uh, uh, Mayor Krantz, and, and uh, on a program called Milton Matters, just showing up in Milton uh, and Halton Hills. And without an investment in transit, their uh, tax rates, are projected to go up five percent this five five and a bit percent this year so you can imagine if you threw transit on top of that 
that it, it, it's very limiting what, what they can do. Um, so for, for Burlington, who's second best in Halton, <laughs> which doesn't say very much, um, if we were to put the kind of system in place that you're looking at, how would that translate to everyone's tax bill? Actually, uh, it would save us money because uh, uh, unfortunately uh, Burlington really just looks at the cost of transit but not the benefits of transit. And uh, the only benefit that they can see is what people put in the fare box. Uh, and that covers about one third of the cost. But there's, uh, there, there's enormous benefits. If we look at uh, Waterloo region, uh, and uh, you know they made tremendous strides in growing their transit system. They're, this year they're going to be opening an LRT, but uh, just with the increased uh, enhanced uh, bus service, uh, they've been getting uh, a lot more ridership. And they've done the studies that, uh, in fact, you know, politicians here will always talk about the infrastructure gap, yeah. and, and yeah. you know it's an enormous number. And uh, but it's primarily roads. And uh, so Waterloo did the math, and because they're not going to have to do all these road widenings, because they're getting more, more and more people out of cars and on, onto, onto buses and, and this year the LRT, uh, the savings in the road budget and the parking budget and ev everything else uh, far outweighs the additional cost of enhanced service. Really? It, it, it is. It's a smart economic move. And it's documented, uh, there was a study done um, about six years ago uh, by uh, the Canadian Urban Transit Association. Burlington is a member of that, as pretty well all cities are. And uh, Jeff Casello, uh, a professor at, um, at Waterloo, uh, he was commissioned to look at the economic benefits of transit. And first of all, he said he couldn't look at everything because, you know, it's so diverse. Mm -hmm. But just at the things he looked at, he had more than a 12% rate of return on transit investment. So his conclusion was very clear. Municipalities could make no better investment right now than to uh, be investing in their transit system. So why doesn't Burlington Council accept that uh, study and come to the realization that we need to invest money? Or is it, or is it at the staff level? I, I think it's both, and, and I think it has a lot to do with a, a phenomenon that uh, has come up this, just this past year. Uh, it's been there, and uh, in, in Burlington's not the only city like this, of course, but uh, uh, we, we tend to think in silos. So we just look at transit in isolation. Mm -hmm. Then we look at roads in isolation. We look at planning in isolation, and and and, and they're all interconnected. So uh, uh, very much so, especially when you look at transit needing uh, a certain volume of people and the uh, uh, planning where we're where we're putting more people in downtown and, and mm -hmm. around, and that that would complement the 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 dollar investment in infrastructure for transit. The planning, whole planning issue does. Oh yes, and and so uh, in Waterloo, they're, they're saying, well, this, this this makes economic sense. So it's not just providing people with good service, although there's there's a big social side to doing that. Uh, in my opinion, is uh, that that in itself would justify having good service, with, you know, because transit for people that. Uh, um, well, first of all, everybody everybody under the age of sixteen. Uh, um, yeah. has to, if if mom, and, if mom and dad can't drive them, they're they're going to need a bus. Yeah. And uh, you know, people uh, who can't afford a car because cars cost about nine thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. uh, to run, uh, or you have any kind of disability, like even even uh, for you and me, like if if I had a a medical condition that affected my sight or or, or something, you know. I'd have to uh, hand in my license and, and, and become dependent. We, we've got, in, in the GTA, or Greater Toronto Hamilton area, we have got the oldest population of anybody, so you would think that that investment would have been made here 
first because of of the aging of our population. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think the reasons are very powerful for investing in transit. Uh, so I think it's uh, the tunnel, <laughs> talking about silos and tunnels, tunnel vision, you know, that you look just at transit and uh, don't look at anything beyond the fare box uh, as, as a benefit. But there's enormous benefits and a lot of them haven't been quantified here yet. Like we're talking about uh, greenhouse gases and global warming. Well, motor vehicles are a major contributor to greenhouse gases. So, you know, if we can get more and more cars off the road and uh, those drivers become riders, uh, have, would have enormous environmental benefits to everybody. You know, I, I hear Mark's comment about the large senior population in Burlington. I mean, that really hits home mm -hmm. for us in this community. And uh, I, b I believe there was a presentation that happened at a council or a committee on Monday, Doug, and uh, in regards to seniors in transit. Do you want to speak a little bit to that? Yeah. Um, uh, Jim Young uh, from the seniors, Burlington Seniors Advisory Committee, he uh, was delegating. Um, uh, Councillor Mead Ward has uh, made a motion. Uh, for uh, free transit for seniors in the off-peak period, in the mid midday, weekday uh, period. So, um, you know, the, uh, the rationale is, well, there's, those are not rush hour periods, so, so there's lots of room. Uh, it's not a capacity issue. It doesn't, the only cost would be foregone revenue for whatever, you know, passengers that uh, would pay suddenly aren't paying for that uh, period. But uh, uh, we just have to look next door in uh, Oakville. And uh, a few years ago, they, uh, they, they began with a pilot. It was free Mondays for seniors. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was a fairly short pilot. I think, I think it was a, less than half a year. Uh, they had a 578% increase in Monday senior ridership, enormous increase. And the other days went up a little bit. So it wasn't like people were diverting to Monday. It was an overall gain, a quite significant gain. And okay, well, they weren't paying fares on Mondays. But one thing I think uh, councils lose sight of is... But they did, th you were saying before the show, that just because they don't pay a fare doesn't mean they don't contribute revenue. Exactly. Uh, that uh, the provincial gas tax money uh, is uh, prorated on just two things, population and ridership. And so if you, you increase your ridership significantly, you get you significantly get more, more money. money from the gas tax. So those free riders are actually, for the community, they're, they're, gener they're generating uh, money. Excellent, interesting how that works out, and because uh, we often we often hear arguments about you know the lost revenue that's going to happen by offering this, and uh, I think one comment I heard in the community was in regards to is this even needed, right? So you know in, in an affluent community like Burlington, mm -hmm. should do do we need to go that route of offering free transit? What, what do you have to say to that, Doug? Well, okay, let, let's take the theoretical case of an affluent rider. Okay. Oh, so so I, I'm a senior, so I can tell me, I, I, uh, I say well I I, I don't need free transit but you know gosh it's uh, it's free and I'm going uh, downtown I think I'll take the free the free bus I'm going uh, for this period uh, well uh, um, yeah, that still benefits everybody because first of all it takes one car off the road yeah. and also takes off that parking space downtown or wherever my destination is so you don't have to provide as much uh, parking and I'm not generating those greenhouse gases out of the tailpipe. So, so I, I think it's a win-win to do, to do this. So your, your group uh, has not been able to make the inroads with, with council to get that kind of investment. Uh, so what do you hope to achieve over the next couple of years in, in breaking down those, uh, those roadblocks uh, that are in front of you? Well, I, uh, I'm a strong com uh, proponent of uh, evidence-based decision-making. You know, let's, let's do the analysis mm -hmm. and do the intelligent thing uh, economically, socially, environmentally. 
and uh, so uh, uh, I, I, I haven't seen uh, encouraging signs from council, but I feel that at, uh, within staff uh, there's a higher level of concern. In fact, we I think it was reflected this year, this past year in uh, we had three appearances of uh, a renowned uh, urban planner, uh, Brent Tedarian. Yeah. And uh, each visit was not just to talk to council and staff, but also big uh, speaking events at uh, first the RBG and then the Burlington Arts Center. The last one, November, there was 450 people came out for an evening to talk about transportation in the city. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. So the, it's a sign that the public is getting concerned about, about this. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, and there's going to be some, uh, at, at long last, we're going to have some studies initiated this year because we've been operating without a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had a plan uh, seven years now. And, and uh, you can't operate that. You can't operate any enter enterprise without a plan. Um, Waterloo has a long-term plan. Even our neighbor Oakville has a five-year plan that they stick to. Uh, and, and we have no plan, so we just make a, a bunch of short-term uh, ad hoc measures, and, and uh, that doesn't work work well for for transit. So I'm hoping that uh, the studies that get initiated, I, I, uh, if we do the analysis right, and Waterloo is a great example. You know, you develop the scenarios. Waterloo developed a transit-oriented scenario. They developed a car-oriented scenario. And the uh, transit-oriented scenario smoked the car-oriented one by a, a mile because you know of the, of the big savings. Wow! So, so I, I'm hoping we'll get that ball rolling. Uh, but we've been sort of pushing against a, a lot of resistance for for our five years of existence. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, I, I think we have no alternative but to persist and hope that uh, the city, maybe this will be a breakthrough year for the city. Can I ask you just one more question in the brief time that we've got left? Where are the businesses and who would benefit by a good transit system and the employers uh, who have to get who, whose employees they need to get to their places of business. Where are they in this scenario? Oh, the employers, uh, uh, more and more of them are coming forward saying uh, we, ne we need transit because we cannot attract staff or retain staff. You know, uh, there's a, we have a lot of factories here and uh, uh, if you don't have a car, it sort of rules out a lot mm -hmm. of our locations for employment. Uh, uh, South Service Road, I know that's under active consideration right now. Uh, there's a lot of employers. Uh, there, not only is there no bus, there's not even a sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I'm hoping that the employers will engage uh, the, the city uh, more aggressively uh, about this. Be and again, that's part of the e economic case uh, for transit as well as social because people have to get to work. Yeah. If I may, you know, yep. Doug, right now transportation or, or transit use in Burlington, I believe, is about 2% when yep. you consider all the modes of transportation right. available, right? Yeah. And if you look at the City of Burlington's official plan, I believe that the expectation is that that is to grow to 11% by 2030, right? If, yeah, if, right. if I'm on the right track here. So, you know, you've, you've kind of hinted at the fact that there's been some struggles with, mm -hmm. with getting Burlington City Council on board and getting the necessary investments. If you could wave a magic wand today and say, you know, these are the things that need to happen to increase that ridership, whether it be to 11% or somewhere along that continuum, what are some tangible things that, could, that Burlington could really do that could make, you know, people's lives better, right, you mm -hmm. know, in, in, in making a better transit system and help the city achieve that goal? Yeah, I think uh, uh, Jared Walker, when he was here a few months ago, uh, hit on that uh, frequency. So right now, like in the Northeast, uh, hourly waits. Uh, that's not going to attract anyone to this to the system. Uh, if we get the f frequencies to something attractive, in fact, you know, growing up in Toronto, I never ever thought of needing a uh, schedule. All I knew was if I went to a, a streetcar or bus stop. 
uh, a vehicle would appear shortly and I'd get on and that, that was uh, over. Now we've actually gone backwards because in the mid 80s we went through a period and unfortunately it wasn't very long but all day 15 minute intervals on our major routes. Mm. And during that period, our, uh, our, our modal share for transit was much higher. It was about three times higher than it is now. So uh, we've even been down that road before. It's not rocket science, but to do that, we'd need more service hours. That means a higher operating budget because you gotta pay the driver and you gotta use more gas. And you gotta get a few more buses on the road. Well, Doug, I, I, I think you've uh, encapsulated the, the difficulty that, that you're having and the, uh, the decisions that uh, this council has to make. But I'm glad to hear that there's, there's some, uh, some evidence to, to in make an investment in transit. And uh, Waterloo is, uh, is, is an interesting one. And uh, we should maybe get them to share the uh, their, their study with us. So I want to thank you very much for uh, for joining us today and uh, and enlightening us on uh, on the transit. And so maybe we can look at it in a slightly different way from now on. So thank well, th you. thank you very much for having me, Mark. Absolutely Enjoy enjoyed it. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, and to our audience, uh, stay tuned. Uh, Corey and I will be right back after these messages.